Today we're going to look at the binomial distribution. Now you've probably already come across the binomial, binomial theorem, um, but today we're going to be looking at um, the binomial distribution um, and looking at some real life problems which um, you can solve using it. So before we start, let's have a look at the essential elements of a binomial distribution, which are there is a fixed number of trials, which we will mark using N. Each trial has only two possible outcomes, a success or a failure. The probability of a success, P, is constant from trial to trial, and trials are independent of each other. If all these conditions um, apply, then we're looking at a binomial distribution for a discrete variable, X. The parameters that define the unique binomial distribution are the values of n, so the number of trials, the probability of success, p, and we can represent it using this form, this notation here. So you might have seen other distributions, such as the normal distribution, um, but here to represent the binomial distribution, we say that the discrete variable uh, x is distributed binomially with n trials and the probability of success, p. So let's have a look at um, an example. So suppose we want to answer this question up here. Find the probability of getting exactly two heads in three tosses of a biased coin. So obviously normally we've got a 50-50 probability, but here we've got a coin which is biased, so the probability of getting a head is two thirds. So we want to find the probability of getting two heads in three tosses. Now you could do this intuitively and work it out writing down all the, all the combinations um, and recognize here that the combinations you could have are head, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, head. Um, and even without knowing anything about the binomial distribution, you could go ahead, use a tree diagram, calculate each of these probabilities and find an answer to that. So um, you can see that for each of these, for instance, if we look at the first one, we've got head, two thirds, times head, two thirds, times tail, one third. Uh, and these other two are just those numbers in a different order. So we've got three lots of two thirds squared times one third, or it might be in a slightly different order. Um, and that gives us an answer of Four ninths. Now that's fine for something like this, but what happens if um, we have a question like this? So what if you are asked to find the probability of obtaining exactly two heads in six tosses of this coin? Now you could try and have a go answering like this, but it's going to be hugely complex. So we want to try and find a mathematically more efficient way of doing it, and that is where the binomial distribution comes in. So first of all, let's have a look at this situation and see if it fulfills the conditions um, that we looked at at the beginning of this session. So we need, uh, in order to apply the binomial distribution, we need a fixed number um, of trials n. So here we've got six trials, so that condition is satisfied. Each trial can only have two possible outcomes, a success or a failure, and again here a success is getting a head and a failure is getting a tail. The probability of success is constant from trial to trial. Again, that's not a problem because here it is, it's two thirds, and trials are independent of each other. And again, that is fine here. Getting ahead is not going to influence the outcome of the, the next um, coin toss. So um, we've got um, a situation where we can use the burnt name distribution. Again, I mean, one way you could try and solve this is actually writing it out and get a, a combination here where you get two heads. But the problem is you don't know how many combinations there are. Um, so we've found, uh, we found here, I mean, this is going to be the probability, but we don't know how many of these combinations there are. So um, just have a think about how you might find that out. Okay, so we've got this situation, we're trying to find two heads and six tosses. Um, we're going to use the binomial distribution. So um, because x is binomial distributed with this distribution, then we can use the, um, uh, the binomial distribution. Um, and in the context here, we've got, so we've got our um, discrete variable. So we've got six coin tosses of which we want two successful outcomes. 
the probability of success, which we define as getting ahead, is two thirds. So two thirds to the power, how many successful outcomes we want, which is two, multiplied by Q, so the, the probability of failure, times four, the number of tails we're going to get. And if we work that out, we can find the total solution is going to be 0 0.0823. Here's a question for you to have a go at then. X is binomially distributed with six trials and a probability of success equal to one fifth at each attempt. What is the probability of exactly four successes, at least one success, and three or fewer successes? So just have a have a quick get at this. You might be able to do some of these, um, but I'll go through it with you and show you how to use your calculator effectively to find this. So we're trying to find the probability of exactly four successes, at least one success, or three or fewer successes. So for the first one, exactly four successes, we've got a binomial distribution here with um, six trials and the probability of success is one fifth. So to find the probability of exactly four successes, probability that the discrete variable x equals four, there are going to be six choose four combinations and the combinations are going to be one fifth to the power four. So we have um, four successes multiplied by failure, four fifths to the power two. So we have two failures. So six choose four is going to be 15 combinations of this, which is going to give you an answer of 48 over 3,125. So that's the probability of getting exactly four successes in one of the 15 different ways. The way you can do that on the calculator then is by going to your um, binomial probability distribution function button. So if you go into um, probability and distributions, then select this one, binomial PDF, which means here you want the exact probability um, distribution function. So there are six trials. The probability of success is one fifth, and we want the probability of getting exactly four. Because we want exactly four, we've chosen this one, the pro binomial probability distribution function, and we can, as an alternative to working it out by hand like this, we can actually just turn it uh, straight into our calculators and solve it that way. Part B then at least one success. Again two ways we can work this. The old school way is to say well at least one success me is the same as one minus no successes. So the probability of getting no successes is going to be four fifths to the power of six. So we're going to do one minus that and we'll get the answer which will give us 0 0.738. Similarly um, there is an approach we can use here using our calculator which is slightly different from the previous question because here we're asked for um, the probability of at least one success. So very similar but not quite the same. Uh, go to the probability um, option on your menu button and this time we're going to select binomial CDF. Now this is the cumulative distribu uh, distribution function because, and you'll see it's got two values here, We've got six trials, the probability of success is one fifth, and we want everything in the cumulative dis uh, distribution function between one and six successes. So again, you can just type that into your calculator and you'll also get the same answer. Uh, part C then here, um, very easy to do again, just using your calculator. So three or fewer successes, we want the binomial cumulative distribution because there are several different options which are adding together. There are six trials. The probability of success is one-fifth, and we want um, some of the probabilities between zero and three, and that gives us an answer of 0 0.983 to three significant figures. Let's have a look at a real-world example then. So the probability that I get a bus to work on any morning is 0 0.4. What is the probability that in a working week of five days, I will get a bus only twice? So pause the video and have a go at that yourself. So we're going to have a look at 
here a binomial distribution. We're going to have x, the discrete variable, is the number of days I get a bus. So we know that it is binomially distributed. I go to work on five days, and the probability that I get a bus to any work, so we'll interpret that as success, is 0 0.4. So um, the probability that I will get a bus only twice, x, our discrete variable is going to be 2. So the, there are going to be um, two successes, so 0 0.4 squared uh, times three failures here, 0 0.6 to the power 3. So we need to find out how many combinations um, there are in which I catch the bus only twice. And to do that, I'm going to use here 5 choose 2, which is going to give us 10 um, combinations. So that enables me to work out the probability of um, a bus getting a bus to work only twice in a working week is going to be uh, 0 0.346 to 3 significant figures. On a calculator to check in a calculator exam here, we want the exact value here, the probability that I'll get a bus only twice. So again here, this is the binomial probability distribution for five trials, the probability of success is 0 0.4 and we want the probability that we have two successes, or here, catch the bus only twice. Another question then here, when administering a drug, it was known that 80% of people using it were cured. The testing program administered the drug to two different groups of 10 patients. What is the probability that all 10 patients were cured in both groups. So just be careful of that sting in the tail there. Again, pause the video, have a quick look at it, and then we'll go through it together. So here we're going to be looking at a binomial distribution. No surprises, it fulfills the, the criteria we need to apply the binomial distribution. We're going to say that our discrete variable x is the number of patients cured in a group of 10. Um, we are going to be looking, therefore, at the probability that all 10 patients are cured, which is just going to be 0 0.8 to the power 10. There's only one way we can get that. So that's going to be a 0 0.107. However, the question is, what's the probability that all 10 patients were cured in both groups? So we need to multiply that um, uh, together, or square it, to give us an answer of 0 0.0115 to three significant figures. Okay, this next question is a little bit more challenging, so um, let's have a look at it. A box contains a large number of carnations, of which a quarter are red and the rest are white. Carnations are picked at random from the box. How many flowers must be picked so that the probability that there is at least one red carnation among them is greater than 0 0.95? So, have a look at that question and see if you can make any headway on it. You're going to have to make some links to other areas of maths to solve this. Um, so try and have a go by yourself, pause the video, and then we'll come and have a look at it together. So for this question, our random variable x, discrete variable x, um, is going to be the number of red carnations. So that's going to be our success in the context of this question. We can use the binomial distribution because if we go back to our um, criteria at the beginning of the session, there is a fixed number of trials. We don't know what that is here. It just says a box contains a large number of carnations. So there is a fixed number of trials n. Each trial has two possible outcomes, a success or a failure. So success is, we're going to interpret that as being a red carnation, or failure is a white carnation. Nothing else can happen. This one here, the probability of a success P is constant from trial to trial. Now you might say, hang on a minute, if I pick out one red carnation, then there's one less uh, red carnation in the box, so therefore the probabilities will change slightly. Now, um, this is the key point here. It says a box contains a large number. Now that basically is code for saying that there are so many carnations in this box that removing one um, has an infinitesimally small effect on the probabilities. So therefore, to all intents and purposes, because there are so many carnations, the probability of success 
is constant from trial to trial. And equally, trials are independent of each other. That one's a little bit more um, obvious. If you pick a red, it's not going to um, have any impact on whether the next one is red or white. So therefore, we've got the random variable, the random discrete variable x, with a binomial distribution with n trials and a probability of success, which we define as a red carnation as one quarter. We know that we're trying to find the probability, uh, we're trying to find the number of flowers that must be picked. So the probability that there is at least one red carnation among them is greater than 0 0.95. So if you remember what we looked at a minute um, ago, the, uh, this idea that there is at least one, the other way we can find that is saying 1 minus the probability that there are no red carnations. So if we do 1 minus the probability that x equals 0, we know that's going to be 0 0.75 to the power n and subtract that from 1. We don't know what n is, however, we're asked to find the probability that it is greater than 0 0.95. So here we can just set up a simple inequality. Uh, and then all we've got to do here is solve for the exponential power. And you should, from previous topics, remember that to solve uh, exponential powers, we're going to apply logarithms. So um, if you need to review your application of logs, um, uh, this would be a good uh, opportunity to practice that as well. Um, and we can solve that to find out that n has got to be greater than 10.4. Because it's a discrete random variable, uh, the number of carnations has got to be a whole number. Therefore, you must pick 11 flowers, 11 uh, carnations before your, you have um, a probability greater than 0 0.95 that you will have at least one red carnation. Final exam question then to have a go at here. A factory makes switches. The probability that a switch is defective is 0 0.04. A factory tests a random sample of 100 switches. Find the mean number of defective switches in the sample. Find the probability that there are exactly six defective switches in the sample. And find the probability that there is at least one defective switch in the sample. So have a go at that, and then we will go through it together. Part A, then, find the mean number. Another way you can interpret this is find the expected value. So quite simply, for this, um, we're going to be looking at uh, when we're finding expected value of a binomial distribution, we're just multiplying the number of trials times the probability of success. So in this instance, we've got 100 switches. 0 0.04 um, uh, is the probability that they are defective. Multiply them together and you get a mean or an expected value of 4. Find the probability that there are exactly 6 defective switches in the sample. So two ways you could do this. Um, by hand, or, or sorry, writing it out the long way, we're going to have 100 trials of which 6 are defective. So we're going to say defective here is actually success, so 0 0.04 to the power 6, multiplied by failure, that they, they work here. Might be slightly counterintuitive, but in this instance that's how we set it up. 0 0.96, therefore, to the power 94. Um, you could also do it on your calculator. Either way, um, that's going to be 0 0.105. Remembering that if you do do it on your calculator, it's going to be the binomial PDF uh, function. Part C, then find the probability that there is at least one defective switch in the sample. Um, and again here, at least one, the easy way to do that is 1 minus no defective switches. So we're just going to do uh, 1 minus 0 0.96 to the power 100, which gives us uh, an answer for the probability of having at least one defective switch as 0 0.983.